it's it was more fun really this was a this was a, a big thing and it frightened me when the, the first day of it and then after I saw that it was exactly like we did but bigger uh, I got over the fear and uh, just went right ahead with it and pretty much uh, was in a good state the whole film. A house was rented to be my house and most of the film was filmed in that house or on the grounds so we would do hair and makeup at that house and then proceed from there. There were a lot of people pestering over me making sure that my wardrobe was, white, uh, was right. Uh, I never had that when we did the Warhol films. You know, we, we were, we didn't have a wardrobe. We, whatever you wore to the, to shoot that day and, and we didn't have a sound man. Paul did the sound, he did the camera, he did the directing, he did the, if the, if the camera was far away, I, I would hold the mic or my brother would hold the mic while we, we did the scene and we would turn it from one person to the next, uh, point it at one another. Uh, to pick up the sound and that was why most of the time when you watch our films you can't hear anything what people are saying and it's real hard to understand the film. No, I, I, I would not say that the experience was a relaxed experience. Um, there were a lot of pressures. Uh, the, probably the worst pressure were the coquis, um, the little tree frogs that uh, proliferate uh, all over Puerto Rico. And they gave us a terrible time because uh, much uh, like a theater w that has lots of air conditionings and, and buzzes of all kinds of kinds, um, there the frogs just all the time were going ee, 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 ee. and I think when you see the film you will hear the coquis. You cannot not hear the coquis. They were just devils and the sound man was going absolutely crazy. <laughs> Max, what are you telling these ladies out here that's keeping them so spellbound? <laughs> Max was just making a suggestion for Ellen's costume for the ball. Well, Ellen, did he solve your problem? Well, I'm not sure. But in shooting, in night shootings, aside from the frogs, the tree frogs that kept chirping like mad, you would sometimes hear the dogs. And if it weren't your dogs that were out of the kennels, it could be the neighbor's dogs that were out of the kennels and patrolling about. So it was an interesting neighborhood to work in. They took care of us very well, as I recall. Uh, life was very simple. One didn't need to have a lot of attention paid. So it was, it was a completely different thing to have a, you know, a room that you rested in between shots. There, weren't, there wasn't a between, uh, between shots with us. It was, you know, if the, the camera ran out of film, we'd take off the, the magazine and put new film in it and we continue to shoot. Uh, that didn't take more than uh, five minutes to do that. We were back to working again. Rita was just very dramatic. Before we even went on, uh, uh, on location, before we went on location and went down to shoot in Puerto Rico, after we had set the cast, Rita would call my office in New York and, and she would be sobbing, sobbing. And I'd pick up the phone and there would Rita be and I'd say, Rita, what's wrong? And, and I would get all upset I'd, and I'd call her agent right away and the agent would say, don't worry, Rita cries a lot from time to time. And it was, I, I guess, a sort of an attention thing because I know Rita and I know she is very capable and not at all flaky or fly by night, but she loved her a little bit of drama now and then. What if he hasn't done anything and I'm being unfair? He'll have a good job at my place. I can handle him. I suppose that I remember about the film most, Rita Gam, because most of our scenes were together and we spent a lot of time um, uh, it, when we weren't shooting together, going to supper or going to the beach or whatever, and we had a great deal of fun and um, became very good friends. She's a charming woman, very bright and um, uh, full of wonderful stories about the business, of wonderful stories about all the things that, that she's done. 
And uh, we stayed in the same hotel, and, and uh, so it, it just made that uh, friendship uh, very easy. That was somewhat problematical from time to time. Catherine, of course, her aunt was uh, Catherine Hepburn, and Catherine saw herself as the perfect trooper, and very much like Auntie, who was always together. So Catherine knew all her lines right away. Catherine was prepared from take one. Rita, who came from a slightly more, shall we say, colorful background and all, uh, kind of did not uh, always know her lines right away. Rita kind of eased into them so that by the time Rita was ready to do a good take, Catherine was going stale, which made it difficult for me as the director to keep the balance going there. But other than that, they were fine together and, and ladies both. I think so. I don't think anybody hated me. It's a long time ago. Maybe, you know, maybe you all just thought I was, you know, an idiot, but I don't think so. I think we all got along real well. There was no conflict between me and Joe at all. Uh, we liked each other. Uh, in my memory of it, anyway, maybe he would have something different to say, but I liked him immensely um, as soon as we met. I found him very sympathetic. Of course, he's beautiful looking. Um, but he, he just seemed to be a very good-hearted person and very serious about his work and um, dedicated to doing what we were all trying to do, uh, to tell this story. And I like that in people. Um, whatever their, their background is, where, whatever experience they've had, um, I wasn't very experienced either, you have to remember at that point. I'd done more theater than I had done film. Oh, it made it quite different because this was the first time I showed up on a set where I wasn't involved with a bunch of freaks, you know. <laughs> but I, I never judged anybody that I worked with. I just was real happy that, uh, you know, that I was able to, to do what people needed me to do and they, they appreciated it. It was the, the basic way. I, I, showed, I suited up, showed up to work, and I, I did whatever you asked me to do and hoped it was good enough. In the end, all we did was use the footage, shoot the footage, uh, do stop motion in a sense, keep adding bark to Joe's face and things like that, and uh, blending him into the tree by dissolves. Well, I think that was the, the hottest part of the film, uh, shooting the ending, the way, changing into a tree because there was a, a lot of makeup. And you know, the special effects back then were not the, the way we have them today, so things were a lot hotter. There was a long time gluing things to me and pasting things on me. And, uh, and in the end, they did do some tricks with the, with the film. I can't remember exactly how they superimposed some stuff over, over the original shot. That's essentially the effect. We could have done such a, today it would be so much more spectacular, but uh, we didn't then. And beside that, effects are expensive. When, I, when they first sent me the tape, I wanted, I wanted to look at the scene that, that was the most important to me, and that was the changing into a tree. So I fast forwarded right through the whole film to that part and uh, watched it two or three times. I thought, wow. That looks pretty good. They were right. Uh, it would have been, you know, it was going to look a lot different than what it looked like on that night that we were shooting it. It's, it, it's absolutely impossible for me to rate or tell you how I feel about the film. It was a very important milepost in my life. It was an education. It was a whole lifetime of education. And uh, I regret not one single minute of it. I think it's amazing and quite wonderful that anybody is interested in seeing this film now and that it has any uh, contribution to film history in, in any way, shape, or manner is, is terrific. I'm, I'm delighted. Revivifying the film after all these years is 
creates all sorts of sensations in me. I think it's terrific. I, if anybody gets more joy out of it or it works for anybody or it amuses anybody, I think that's great. I'm, I'm told by, by some people <clears throat> that they've read in the press that making The Gardener was the end of my film career, that it was such a, a um, departure from the, uh, the sort of thing that I, that I had done with Guess Who's Coming to Dinner that it ruined my chances of uh, ever working again in Hollywood. Now, I'm the last person in the world to know um, about whether something like that is true. But all I can say is I don't have any regrets about doing it. Um, it was the, the first challenging script that came along after Guess Who's Coming to Dinner that wasn't just a script that was a rehash of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. And I certainly didn't want to do that because you don't want to walk down the same path again and again and again. Did anybody ever mention the credit of the gardener when giving me a job? I, I don't believe anybody ever mentioned ever seeing me in much of anything. They all said, oh, I've seen lots of your films, but I don't think they ever specifically mentioned any film that I've ever done as, oh, I really liked you in that when they were giving me a job. I think that um, making, making Guess Who's Coming to Dinner was both a fantastically wonderful experience, terrific opportunity, but that was the end of my film career because the character that I played was a cipher. She wasn't really um, a character that you could get a hold of and say, oh, I know who this actress is and what she could do because of what she does in this film. I would always talk to them as if, you know, if you believe I can do your film, you know, I can do it. Because I always come from a place of, uh, you know, I'm really uh, fooling you all. Uh, I'm not really an actor. Uh, but uh, if you believe I can do something, then, you know, if you believe I can do it, I'll do it. And uh, that's what I've been doing for the last 30 or so years. I wish it had turned Catherine Houghton into a major star, but it didn't. And I wish it had made Joe even bigger than, than he was in terms of filmdom, but I don't think it did. I don't think it hurt anybody, and that's also important.